that you've seen the basics of the shop builder, I'm going to take you through some of the manipulations that you can use to control how your shop builder works. So um, the first thing I'm going to do um, is in what I want to do in this, for my experience, I want to highlight products um, in my shop, which are particularly good for children who are really into animals. So the way I'm going to do that is using the labels. And I've got some labels that I've made here, which I want to put on some of my products. So to start with, I'm going to go to, I'm going to go back into my product data set and I've actually added a few columns myself. So these are columns that Gorilla knows nothing about. These are ones that I've made up. Um, and I put in some, uh, a few extra things. I put in one called search keywords. So this is where we can nudge the, um, the searching to search for certain things that maybe don't appear in the product name. So here, if you search for the word wizard, it's going to find you all of the Harry Potter related things. I've got another column called flag, which is so I can tag things that are uh, to do with Harry Potter. And I've got another flag here, which is called animal. So here I've marked with a one all the products that have got some kind of animal in them. So obviously Hagrid's heart has got Buckbeak in it. Uh, the plane of your horse box and the pet room we've got animals in. Uh, the, rest, uh, the, the, the board game has got bugs in it. And then obviously all of the, the teddies of animals. So that's how I'm um, starting to sort of categorize the various things in my shop. So I'm going to go ahead and upload that product set instead. Oops, that one. And we can see those new flags come up here. So now we're going to go and we're going to put some labels onto some of my products. So if I go to the label section, the way all of these different um, manipulations work is that for each one, you can add a con you can add them as a condition. So I'm going to add one particular label condition, which is going to be the animal badges. And I want to add a label here, um, which I am going to say, okay, so I've got what a large image and I need to add the uploads to my assets first. Let's go and show you those first. So the way I want this to work is I want, I've got two badges here. You probably can't see on this video, but this is a larger badge with a little paw print that says perfect for animal lovers. Uh, and I've got a second one here, which is just a small one, the paw print, and you'll see where those go in a moment. So let's upload both of those. There they are, you can see them a bit more clearly now. And if I go to my labels, um, I can first of all say, well, use that as a large image and that as a small image. And I want in my criteria down here, I want to add a criteria and I want to match all products where the animals flag is equal to the fixed value of one. Um, there's all sorts of other ways I could um, basically pick out the criteria for, for this thing, but that's what we're using for now. And I want to match all, you can also just match any if you had a slightly different way of doing your rules. So that now what we should find when we preview, let's go and have a look. Uh, so now we can see the labels come up when we want to choose the animal badges condition. So let's go and have a look in our Lego. So here we go, Hagrid's hut has got that badge on it. Uh, if we go to the Playmobil, these have got their bad, those badges on. The board games, there's the bug one and the soft toys obviously all have them. Um, and what, when, if I add onto my basket, you can see that in the basket, we use the small badge there. So you still have, even though once you browse off to a different page, we remember that that was an animals one. So this is obviously a somewhat silly example, but you can use this for, um, tagging foods as healthy or unhealthy. You could use these as tagging certain products as environmentally friendly or environmentally destructive, uh, or anything else you could think of, which would involve labeling or categorizing your products in a certain way. Um, I can show you some of the other things. So obviously, if I search for Harry Potter, we get Harry Potter things. But um, if I search for wizard, we also get all the Harry Potter things um, because of that search keyword that we used. Um, and this is that. This is that. This is the animal lovers condition. Um, if you were doing an experiment where you had two different conditions, um, you could of course add a second condition here. Uh, which might be, um, maybe you might do Harry Potter badges or something like that. And so you don't have to have a whole separate shop um, in order to do a, a different condition. You would simply just add a different label condition here. And then these are configured, as you can see, as manipulations. So when it comes to your experiment tree, you can then put two instances of the same shop and just choose a different manipulation to enable each different condition. Uh, and all of the other things you see, so adding taxes to your products, uh, enabling swaps, um, uh, enabling a shopping list, uh, all of those are controlled in the same way.